So a couple of things before we get stuck into the uh, to this work. Uh, a couple of things you're going to need. Uh, obviously, uh, you need to uh, jack the car, uh, jack the car up, and get the wheel off, uh, as we have done here. Obviously, to gain access to that. Uh, if you need a little bit of help with that, we've um, we've done a wheel removal uh, guide. Uh, we'll have a link for you below this video on YouTube in the information section. Go down and check that out if you need to. Uh, the other thing you're going to need uh, for the reassembly uh, of this and uh, for kind of general cleanup, you will need some brake cleaner and you will need some brake grease. Uh, it doesn't really matter what uh, brand that you buy. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of them out there on the marketplace, but you need to buy a brake cleaner and also a brake grease. Uh, the old uh, kind of brake grease is uh, is copper grease or copper slip. Uh, that's what used to be used um, most commonly on uh, on brakes. Uh, today, that's uh, kind of replaced with a dedicated uh, brake grease products. So if you can get the brake grease rather than the copper copper grease. So once you've got those, you can get stuck in. So the first stage is to get the actual caliper itself uh, out of the way. There's two bolts that hold this on. Uh, if you look just at the rear here, uh, you, you will see uh, we've got these two nuts, one on the rear and another one that kind of sits uh, just on the on the inside uh, of the kind of uh, caliper frame itself. And these are th uh, size 13 and size 15. So let's get the uh, size um, 13 and 15 spanners and we can uh, crack these off. A quick note for you on the one, uh, this one here on the inside. Uh, if you use a normal uh, spanner, uh, you'll find that you'll struggle to get it in width wise. See that's just, just starting to uh, take on that washer there. Uh, some of these are better than others, depending on what model that you've got. Uh, but on some of them, like this particular one, what I'm going to have to do is use a, a specialist um, thin uh, spanner. Uh, if you haven't got a thin one, uh, you can get these in uh, with a little bit of a, a little bit of a tap. You have got to be careful, so obviously you really don't want to be damaging this this washer here. Uh, but if you need to, you 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 can just give that a gentle tap in a normal size 15, and you'll get that. Uh, but if you've got something a little bit thinner. Uh, that would be the uh, the ideal solution. So some of these uh, nuts can be uh, can be in particularly tight. You can see I've got a little bit of corrosion on these nuts. That's uh, so what I'm going to do. Is uh, I've got a pen penetration spray. We use a product called Plus Gas, uh, but there are plenty of different ones uh, available. It's so going to give this a light a light spray. I'm going to do this on the top uh, and the bottom. And I'm just going to give that a couple of minutes uh, before I uh, before I tack those. That's uh, so what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to wipe the excess off in a minute just to protect the paint on the caliper. Although this is pretty neutral stuff, to be fair. Um, and then what I'll do is we'll go down to the uh, the uh, bottom one and I'll uh, spray that one uh, as well. So whilst we're uh, at it with the penetration spray, I've got quite a lot of corrosion in these in these brakes. Uh, so I'm going to use the penetration fluid on the uh, back of the carrier bolts as well. The easy way to identify this, if you look on the side, obviously we've got the, uh, the caliper here, this is what we're working on. This section here is the carrier. If you look down the rear, you've got the rear arm of the uh, carrier. And uh, hopefully, uh, you can just about see, I think that's it there. Uh, the uh, nut there, again top and bottom, just give that a good uh, a good blast with the penetration spray as well and uh, that will give that a good kind of 20 minutes to soak in whilst we uh, crack on with the caliper. Okay, now my rear nut is particularly uh, stubborn so what I'm going to do, uh, I don't mind if this, this other one turns at the moment, I just want to get this uh, so it's moving. So I'm going to hold it on, just gent gently give it a bit of a tap. Just a bit. Yeah. There, he's definitely moving which is good. Again, you can see that that nut uh, in the centre is not, not turning at all for me. That's uh, so why I haven't had to use the second spanner to hold it in place, but you likely will. That's it, that's the, uh, that's the two removed. So next stage is uh, we've removed the bolts and we're ready to try and actually remove the caliper from the discs and the pads. Uh, but of course we've got the tension on there from the handbrake currently. So what you want to do is pop in, release your handbrake, make sure it's completely off and then we can uh, move on. So next stage, just before we dismant start dismantling all of the uh, components, uh, just for the sake of safety, what we're going to do is going to take a wheel bolt 
and we're going to uh, uh, put the wheel bolt in. Now what you want to do is put the wheel bolt uh, as close to top centre if you can. I've got two that are pretty much top centre, uh, but as I'm working on the caliper area over here, and I want to give myself a little bit more space, I'm going to put it in this one. And all that does, uh, should when you uh, start uh, pulling these uh, bits apart, should the uh, when it all becomes loose, the um, uh, brake disc uh, come loose and decide that it's going to fall from the car, uh, then obviously this will stop it falling off and landing on your foot. So it's just a, just a simple safety precaution. So with the handbrake released, we just want to have a, a quick kind of feel around and, and see how tight it is. I don't know you see that, we've, actually, we've got a little bit of a movement there. And a lot of people think, uh, well, what if I, you know, I mean, these discs are particularly good. You can see these are, although the, the car's been stood, so they are they are rusty. There's not much wear on these at all. Uh, sometimes you get a really badly pitted um, disc, and so the uh, the brake pad is sat really deep inside the disc. So people think, oh, how am I going to get the caliper off? You know, if I've got to grind the edge off to release it. You're not trying to release the brake pad from the brake disc. You're trying to release the caliper from the uh, from the pads so the pads can stay in situ and they most likely will and they definitely will if you've got a you know a, a large kind of a pitted edge on it so don't worry too much about that for the time being so a bit of a feel and you can see we've got a bit of bit of movement here and these are going to come off all right actually often they do there we go so literally like i said all you're doing is you're sliding the face of the caliper over the uh, the face of the brake pad the brake pad's uh, going to stay where it is now if for any reason you um when you're doing this, uh, yours isn't quite as easy as this. What you can do is come in with a, a lever tool and start trying to find uh, points to help you lever it off. Uh, and if it's on tight, that is kind of the only option. But hopefully, yeah, these are all right. And you saw how much kind of corrosion stuff there was uh, on the bolts and stuff. Uh, so these are probably about as bad as you can get. Uh, so there you are. So that's the uh, that's the caliper removed. Now, what you don't want to do at this stage. It's just let the caliper caliper hang down because you've got the uh, the flexi hose um, here, and this is uh, obviously connected to the brake system. This is what brings the brake fluid uh, into the caliper, and you can put a strain um, if you hang the uh, if you hang the caliper from the brake cable. To be honest, the the rears aren't too bad. So you've got the handbrake cable as well, which you can just see at the bottom. So when I let go of it, you can see that the tension's actually on the uh, the handbrake cable, not really on the um, on the flexi line there. Uh, front calipers are a different story, they're a lot heavier, a lot chunk chunkier. Uh, what you want to do, if you can, uh, just for the time being, is just find somewhere on top of the uh, suspension components, rather than letting it hang, somewhere where you can just kind of sit it uh, safely in situ, uh, like so. So with the caliper out of the way, uh, we can kind of see the assembly here, and what we want to do is actually get these, uh, these pads out of the way. Now if you give them a bit of a wobble, sometimes you can pull them out by hand, these are a little bit sticky. Uh, if they are sticky, uh, you can kind of get a, uh, a flathead screwdriver in there and just give it a, a bit of a tap, like so. As you can see, the um, uh, the disc then, it just kind of dropped, and this is why we put that bolt in uh, earlier. Because so what you don't want is that whole thing to fall off and uh, land on your, on, on your feet. See how loose that is now? See, that's, that's ready to kind of, that's ready to go. But it's not going anywhere, so I've got the, uh, the bolt in there. So what you want to do, you see the, uh, the pads have got these little arms on the side, as you would have seen on your uh, brand new replacements that you've got ready to fit, and you just basically get them out of the frame like so. Uh, so that is the, uh, that's the old brake pad there. Uh, for, this, for this example, we're actually going to be refitting uh, this disc and uh, pad back on this car. Uh, that give you an idea. So we've, we've done that, I'm just going to do exactly the same on the rear one as well. So we've got the pads out of the way, and uh, next thing we want to do is get the uh, the old disc off. So obviously, what you want to do is just take the uh, take the weight of it. Remove your wheel bolt, and then just draw the whole thing carefully forward, like so. There you go. So that's the old disc uh, removed. And uh, there we have the other uh, hub uh, ready to uh, fit the new disc to. So the next thing you want to do is identify the bolts for the uh, carrier. Now you can see the top one uh, quite clearly if you just kind of look in behind there. Uh, size 18 they are, so they're quite chunky. You can see the top one there, you can't see the bottom one from uh, from this angle, so he's hidden in behind uh, this here. Uh, but if you look in from the top, uh, you'll see both of those. Okay, so looking in from the top, uh, this is that top nut uh, that we just showed you, uh, that you can see very clearly from the back. 
if you look down the bottom, uh, there's the second one hidden down at the bottom just there. Carrier removed. What you'll find with your new disc, <clears throat> it looks something like this. It'll come in one of these uh, kind of vacuum, vacuum sealed bags, and within there, you can probably just make it out. What they do is they put a, like a light coat of uh, grease uh, all over the disc. Basically, what that does, it stops it um, rusting in the packaging, so you don't open this packaging and find a um, an oxidised uh, disc. Uh, with minor rust on it, it's nice and shiny and bright from the packet. However, that's no good for fitting onto the car because brake pads um, actually uh, they kind of soak up material. So if you've got a grease on there, it's possible that it could soak that grease up. So what we need to do is, is clean these properly uh, with a brake cleaner. So what I've, what I've got here is just a spray on brake cleaner. I'm going to clean that. Uh, with some blue roll and some brake cleaner. And just give this kind of two or three goes over with brake cleaner. What you want to do is get rid of all of that grease uh, off of the uh, surface. And obviously once you've done this, uh, we're going to flip this, uh, flip it over, we're going to flip the cardboard over as well. Once you're happy that you've done the one side, you're flip it over and you can probably see the grease uh, there shining in the uh, in the light. And what we're going to do is clean up that, that side exactly the same uh, as we did on the first side. And just before we reinstall the uh, disc, uh, it's a good idea just to give the uh, front of the uh, wheel bearing hub area here. A bit of a clean over using again using your brake cleaner. It's great for general cleanup. And a bit of a blast, get rid of as much as the kind of the crud as you can uh, off of there. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'm going to apply a little thin layer of the uh, of the brake grease uh, just to the back here uh, just to uh, prevent um, any kind of uh, corrosion or build up uh, between the two over time. So what you want to do is just get a bit of your uh, bit of your brake gr grease and just put a little tiny little thin layer of it. All the way around. Uh, obviously I'll spend uh, I'll spend a minute or so doing that. Uh, all the way around there and then also a little bit just around the uh, the edge there uh, where it kind of touches the um, where the hub kind of uh, touches the inner uh, part of the uh, of the disc as well. So let's give that a good, like I said, just a, just a thin layer. Uh, you don't want to be slapping this, this on. A little thin layer like so, and then we're, uh, we're good to go. And next you've got these little uh, spring pads, uh, these little silver pads. If you give these a bit of a wiggle, these will just pop out. They're only kind of held in uh, with compression, that's the name. those out. So. Okay next very important um, with the uh, brake pads as you can see we're fitting uh, non-genuine non-genuine pads today but you want to ensure that when you buy the uh, pads most of them do even the uh, kind of more budget orientated ones like these you want to make sure that they come with four new caliper bolts uh, as you can see there very very important because these are meant to be renewed uh, again every time the uh, caliper is removed and also these little guide pins these little spring clips uh, four new ones of those as well. So be sure when you're selecting your uh, your brake pads, like I said, they do not have to be uh, the genuine ones, uh, but when you are selecting them, just make sure that they do come uh, with the accessories. And just to note if you're, um, if for any reason your uh, your pads don't come with the, uh, the new spring clips, uh, you can buy them separately, they're quite inexpensive. Uh, worst case scenario is you can clean them up. If you use some, uh, some brake cleaner and use your, your uh, plastic brush, 
bristled brush or a lightweight um, wire brush, uh, you can clean those up quite nicely. And really it's only the, uh, the bit that the, uh, the pad sits in uh, that needs to be cleaned up. It really doesn't matter if this bit's dirty because that bit doesn't do anything. So you can clean them up if needs be, but ideally you want to get yourself a new set if you can. Next thing you want to do is get yourself some uh, brake grease. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be this brand. Uh, there's literally hundreds of brands uh, out there. Uh, but you want to use a uh, brake grease. Um, you can also use um, copper grease or copper slip. Uh, that's often used on, on brakes. It's becoming a slightly outmoded uh, product to use on, on brakes. There's quite a lot of um, negativity towards that product on, uh, on the various uh, forums, as you'll probably read for yourself. Uh, but it's still... It's still okay, it still does the job to be perfectly honest, especially on uh, older vehicles where it's not quite so important. Uh, but if you want to do some investigation, get on Google and, and bore yourself for uh, for hours on, on end. There's uh, lots of posts on that. Uh, what we're going to use today is a little bit of a, a proper brake grease. This is um, uh, obviously a product that's formulated specially for brakes and we're going to use this to, uh, to lubricate the uh, various components. Okay, what I like to do is put a little bit... Uh, on the inside of these uh, sliders, just where the uh, the brake's going to, um, the pad's going to slide backwards and forwards. When you're doing this, be careful not to rub it on the uh, on the disc itself. So just a light coating, like so, there, and we'll do the same uh, up in the top one there as well. So the uh, brake disc is ready. Uh, like I said, we're refitting. Uh, yours will be a nice, shiny, brand new one. I've also got my uh, my wheel bolt uh, to hand. What I want to do is just very carefully fit the new disc around the carrier, like so, and get it onto the hub here, get it aligned, and just pop your wheel nut back in uh, just to hold that in situ. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put the second one in at this stage as, as well. That's fine. There you go. So that's now safe. Now again, on the uh, on the actual pads themselves, uh, the bit that actually slides uh, backwards and forwards is just this little uh, just a little tab here. Uh, so it's a good idea just to put a little bit of the uh, the brake grease uh, just around the edges where it's going to be sliding uh, in that spring spring clip as well. Now the other uh, point that you can uh, add grease to, and this is where kind of the the um, copper grease I mentioned before uh, was kind of kind of most often used is on the uh, backing plate. Obviously, not on the uh, face of the pads, on the backing plate here. Now, when we put this on, uh, I'm gonna, I'll put some on these. You don't always have to because they they put these uh, these special this special kind of backing on, which kind of prevents it from sticking. But you know, for example, the one that's going to be on the back is going to be the uh, piston uh, that's pressing in the uh, the centre of the pad. So if you put some kind of in the centre of the pad. Like I said, it's probably not really necessary on these pads because these do have the backing on them. So that's where the piston will uh, will touch on that one. And then on the other one, which is uh, the actual um, caliper itself, uh, if you have a quick look at the caliper, just up, uh, just up there, so you've got two kind of prongs. And so it's those two prongs that kind of make contact with the, uh, with the disc. So you kind of, more kind of like, like that if you like. So you can just put a little bit on there if, if you like. It won't do any harm at all putting it on. So, you know, if you'd rather have it on than not. Anything like that, just roughly. I kind of give you, give you an idea. So the principle is, obviously, these uh, two little ears, they, they sit in the grooves. And uh, this thing moves uh, backwards and forwards, uh, kind of as you uh, apply the brakes. And obviously, as, as they wear down, they get closer and closer. So they, they kind of need to slide in and out of that groove, which is why we put a little bit of grease in there as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more uh, grease uh, just onto the tips here, uh, just before I uh, refit these as well. So like so. And what you want to do, you know, one, ones on the front tend to be a little bit harder to, uh, to fit than the ones on the rear. A bit of an angle, and then just feed them in like so until they uh, sit flush uh, with the disc. 
when you do that you should feel because you have lubricated those uh, that they should kind of go go in and out fairly uh, fairly easily the front ones are uh, rear ones good this one I might clean out a little bit more he's, he's not too bad actually he's okay and once the grease starts to work let's have a look yeah there you go yeah once that grease starts to work yeah he's okay actually so there we go but do give them a give them a check make sure they are moving freely uh, backwards and forwards and then we're ready to uh, reattach the caliper Now inside here it's literally just a metal pin and um, some brake kits, uh, depending on what, what kit you're buying, will come with that. So if you want to replace those that's no problem at all and likewise if you want to remove these and re-grease them you can. Uh, you generally don't have to unless you've kind of got a problem with them uh, but these can be um, unbolted and in there it's just literally a metal pin. You can put some of your, uh, your brake grease on there and uh, slide that closed and um, uh, reassemble uh, if required uh, but that's another thing uh, not essential uh, but if, again if you get that with the brake kit that you do buy uh, worth doing um, rather than not fitting in it if you've got them to hand so next we need to uh, look at the actual uh, piston of the caliper here uh, as you can see this one's not protruding uh, too far that's because the uh, the pads and the discs are actually quite new on this car when you look at yours if the pads are quite old uh, this you know this will be quite a lot further in than this and actually what we've got to do to uh, to refit this uh, obviously when this comes out because your uh, brake pads are worn uh, the caliper doesn't uh, won't have the space to fit over your brand new pads which are thicker so what you've got to do is actually rewind uh, this caliper uh, back into the body uh, sorry rewind the piston back into the body of the caliper and uh, that will give you the, uh, the space that is required uh, to fit over a brand new, nice, chunky set of brand new pads. Uh, so this is what we're going to do next. Now you can buy little kind of cheap tools for, for doing this, uh, like this one here. Um, I've never found these to be too good. It kind of just about fits, but seems a little bit ropey. Or you can use a proper uh, brake re rewind tool. Uh, the brake rewind tools aren't very expensive uh, these days. Um, 20, 25 pounds, 30, 35 dollars, something like that will buy you a, a decent tool. And uh, that will do a much better job than kind of uh, one, one of these, especially as, as you can see, this one only just kind of makes, makes contact and is likely to slip out. So use a proper uh, brake re rewind tool. Um, if you want to do it on the cheap, you can get one of these. Uh, these are dirt cheap, five, six pounds, you know, seven, eight dollars, something like that. Uh, but I well recommend getting uh, a proper kit if you're going to be doing the, uh, the, the work on the brakes. Now this is an example of um, a fairly generic uh, brake rewind kit. This is the sort of stuff you can buy on, on eBay for about £25, um, which is like I said about $35, something like that. And uh, basically you've got these, uh, these two rewind tools. Uh, they, go, they go in opposite directions, the thread is uh, set in different directions because different, um, obviously this is a multi um, tool for doing all different brands of cars. Uh, some turn in one, some rewind in one direction, some rewind in the other. You see we've got all these little uh, little plates that come with uh, the uh, two little pins in uh, different locations. What you've got to do is go through your kit and find uh, which one of these plates uh, fits the um, the uh, the piston uh, in, in the caliper there. Work that out and then uh, we can put this together and, and get it rewound. Okay now looking at the rear caliper uh, this is uh, what needs to be rewound and uh, this obviously needs to be turned it's not like a front caliper which can just be pushed straight back it's got these two grooves uh, in it um, and you want to match up the uh, the tool from your uh, from your brake rewind kit uh, find the right uh, front piece that will go into these two slots and then that will allow that to be turned and it's the turning motion uh, that will drive that um, piston back into the caliper So that's correctly aligned. You see, we've got the uh, the little uh, kind of knob jewels on the back of the uh, the plate. There are fitted into the grooves, and uh, we've got this uh, fitted safely in situ just there. I've just kind of got it hand tight, and then from this uh, point on, we use the uh, the handle to rewind the caliper. So then, when you get to the uh, the end of re rewinding, that'll be your uh, piston driven all the way back in. So it should be as, uh, as deep as you need it to go. And you just can slacken the, uh, the tool back off, like so, and that should be ready to fit.
just finger tighten the, uh, the bolts top and bottom and then we're going to torque these up in a moment to uh, factory spec uh, which is 35 uh, newton meters. So now we're going to grab a torque wrench and torque these up to spec which is 35 uh, newton meters on these. Uh, do double check that, do a quick Google search. Uh, it can vary caliper to caliper, but on most of the, uh, the C5s you're looking at 35 Newton meters. So there we go, 35 uh, newton meters, and uh, we're good to go. So now this is uh, actually reassembled. Um, obviously we're at the stage now where you can put your, your wheel back on and uh, you'll be good to go. One thing to note is, um, yes, the uh, caliper's tightened. We just tightened up the uh, the bolts there to factory spec, etc. Everything here is quite tight. But what won't be particularly tight is the uh, the piston against the uh, the pads themselves. Obviously we've slackened that off by fully rewinding uh, that piston. Uh, so what you want to do, first of all, is um, uh, get in the uh, the driver side of the car once you've got the uh, the wheel and everything back on. Give the uh, handbrake uh, a good few uh, pumps, uh, and that will uh, auto correct the uh, the turn, yeah, the turn, the twist motion. That will that will twist that back in, and uh, make sure the handbrake's good. And um, before you actually start drive driving off, start your engine. Give the um, give the um, uh, the brakes uh, a good few a few pumps uh, don't press the brake pedal too hard just little short sharp ones uh, just to get everything uh, back tight again uh, as the fluid comes back into this caliper you should feel the uh, the brake pedal uh, tighten up and then take it for a very very short test drive uh, on your own road and make sure you're 100% happy obviously before you take this thing out on the on the open road as it were uh, but you want to do that before you just kind of drive off you actually want to make sure that brake pedal is working as it should and likewise with the uh, the handbrake um, adjustment as well pump that a few times and that should all tighten up and work as it should as well uh, so once you've done that you should be good to go so there we go that is uh, how to uh, replace your uh, distant pads mm -hmm.